Hello and welcome to another episode of Talking Tropes. I'm David. And I'm Hannah. And today we're talking about Hitler. But not just any Hitler. Funny Hitler. Come on, we all know funny (laughs) Hitler. The goofy Hitler. Movie Hitler. Comedy funny time Hitler. Um, We're talking about a trope on on TalkingTropes.com, which is, or on uh, TVTropes.com. (laughs) Which, <laughs> if only we had our own website one day uh, which which they they deem uh adolf hitlerius which i think is a great uh a great little pun to yeah enshrine all of the works of of mel brooks and charlie chaplin and uh, ernst Lubitsch, uh, all of these great comedians who have decided that despite the tabooness of the subject we should in fact make fun of hitler um, yeah. And that tradition still continues to this day. Um, I yes. uh, sort of compiled a little like YouTube playlist of, <laughs> of all the clips that I could find online of Hitler as a punchline. Um, yeah. And honestly, I think, you know, he's kind of an easy target, you guys. He's a, he's a little bit of a punching bag. He's a ridiculous person, and you know, fascism is also very ridiculous, and right. so you know, it's very easy to uh, make fun of it. And and in fact, many people on the internet before us have argued that it's important to make fun of fascists because they hate it. <laughs> right. And uh, I I personally subscribe to that ethos one hundred percent. I mean, sometimes fascists hate it, but also fascists love edgy jokes. So you have to be really careful <laughs> who your, your enemies are. Uh, right. And, and who, who the butt of the joke really is. Right. Um, so I, I, I'd, uh, I, you know, I, I have to give credit where credit is due. Um, a lot of the inspiration for this video does come from the Lindsay Ellis video on whether you could make uh, a Mel Play Brooks movie battles. today. Yeah. Uh, so we want to avoid treading on as much ground as she does, uh, where she talks about sort of tracing the history of what was acceptable to talk about when it comes to Hitler. Um, I think we want to get to like what exactly is the joke of Hitler yeah. when he's on when he's on screen. Um, yeah. And and what are the the trends and the tropes within that? Right. Absolutely. So let's let's kick it off. Do you want to start a uh, modern and then sort of track our way back or or yeah what, why not yeah. um let's let's start with some of the hitler sketches that i found uh online because online there's less of a barrier to entry there's no higher up saying oh you can't do that joke that's too racy yeah um so you've got some college humor examples uh meeting hitler in hell <laughs> It is what it says on the tin. Uh, that was a lot of college humor in the early days. Was yeah. just the the joke is in the title. Yep, yep. It's like um, onion articles. You don't need to read the whole thing. You just read the title, and you're like, okay, I got it. <laughs> exactly. Um, and there was also, you know, uh, the the meeting Hitler in hell or depicting Hitler as being in hell as the joke uh, is kind of a trope that that runs through a lot of these. There was. Um, Gilbert Godfrey appeared in a, a film called Highway to Hell as Hitler. He's in hell. <laughs> so, and, and there's a lot of other examples. South Park did it. Uh, you know, I'm sure that, uh, oh, oh, even, uh, you know, Book of Mormon on Broadway did it. Mm-hmm. So there's lots of examples of just seeing Hitler in hell and that's the joke. And you right. normally see him next to someone who is not quite as bad as Hitler. Right, right. You know, it's like him and then like, a philosopher or right. somebody you know, like, that, that the writer didn't like. like right, uh, right. In in Book of Mormon, it's Johnny Cochran, you know. <laughs> oh, he's a bad guy. He's like Hitler, you know. Easy yeah. joke. Um, Easy. It's, you know, what what's the rule of the internet that uh, if you bring up Hitler, <laughs> you lose, whatever. Right, Godwin's Law. Godwin's um, Law, that's what it's, it is. It's yeah. that Hitler always comes up in an argument, and as soon as yeah. he does, whoever brought it up is Loses. like cheating, I yeah. guess, uh, yeah. to make a comparison to Hitler. Right. Um, the, but College Humor also had one that I thought was not quite as hack, which was uh, The Charming Mr. Hitler, which is part of their series, The Britishes, which was parodying Downton Abbey. Did you watch this one, <laughs> Hannah? I didn't get a chance to, no. <laughs> well, it's it's kind of just um, making fun of the uh, 
snotty aristocracy of of England, you uh-huh. know, making fun of the Downton Abbey characters and saying that they would have been charmed by Hitler's, you know, down to earth demeanor, his uh, you know, his art, his poetry. Right, his writing. love of dogs. <laughs> Right, and so it just basically shows him, you know, charming the pants off of this oh snotty God. British family. I love um, it. <laughs> but, you know, always kind of hinting that something's going to go pretty bad pretty soon. So Right. Again, it's like, the joke, does it live up to the inclusion of Hitler in it? I don't know. Uh, it's almost like Hitler is bigger than the sketch. Mm-hmm. So to bring him up is kind of, you know, just... A cheap joke you know they could have gone with anybody i guess who was right. uh you know a bad person it just is a statement yeah. for bad yeah <laughs> i don't know i feel like in that particular scenario hitler kind of works because you know it's it's supposed to be taking place or like during slash just after world war one and you know like that right. like early 1900s and so you know like oh yes just charming mr hitler from germany strolling by you know like <laughs> he's not hitler hitler yet he's just right. mr hitler yeah i guess that's that's part of the joke of on a lot of these that you'll see is uh hitler as somebody that the people just don't recognize as the monster that the audience is recognizing them as. Right, and right. That contrast creates uh, creates humor. That's that's mm-hmm. pretty much the same joke as the Monty Python sketch, uh, the Mr. Hilter sketch. Um, did you get a chance to <laughs> right. watch that one? Yeah, I, well, I've seen this one before, but mm. yes, I did watch it again. <laughs> Do you want to just explain the joke there? I mean, it's that, you know, it's it's like Hitler, but slightly to the left, you know, it's <laughs> like the national I don't know if he's to the left, he's just, uh, party, like, you know. No, no, he, he is he is running as a as a bastional bocialist. That's what something. it is, a bastional bocialist, yes. Like, yeah, you know, so it's he's, just a, like he's still running goes, as a Nazi, but uh, right, he's no, not. Right, no, no, but like he's doing it with like a fake, mu- but, I mean, he has a Hitler message, but like, you know, like if he was Hitler in googly eyes is basically how I would <laughs> describe the theme of the sketch. You well, know, it's like, it's just that it's you know it's a uh, um, it's Hitler, but he's in England, you know. So it's that sort right. of joke of what if Hitler had survived the war? Would he try again to you know take over the world, or would he just be powerless? And this is suggesting like okay, if if Hitler could just kind of change some of the words around from national socialist to national bocialist, and right. from concentration camps to concentration bamps. <laughs> Um, and that people would still start to fall for it. Um, Which, like, they're not wrong. <laughs> well, so, that, yeah, I think that's, like, a decent uh, satire because it's sort of a yeah. warning, I guess, to, uh, you know, right-wing populism sort of rising again in a right. new form. That it, like, it, doesn't, it doesn't die with Hitler, that Hitler kind of exists past where he exists. Yeah, and that, you know, the ideas that he was working with were not unique to him and, you know, can, hashtag, it can happen here. (laughs) And it is in both the UK and the US currently, unfortunately. And that sort of like Hitler surviving his own death, I think that kind of goes into um, jokes about resurrected Hitlers or jokes about time travel to undo Hitler. Um, like, these are very basic jokes that appear in, like, random kind of unrelated sketches. Anytime that you have, like, a time machine, someone's going to suggest, well, let's go back in time and kill Hitler. Let's go back in time and kill Hitler when he was a baby. So let's go back uh, and and sort of go back to the the origin, almost, of um, of these Hitler parodies in, in movies. Uh, you know, we've talked about some sketches, but there's there's a long history of Hitler being a goof on film. Um, right. Well, I mean, I, it starts out as, as sort of pre-war uh, propaganda, right. typically in, in England or in, uh, in the U.S. Because yeah. at that point, he wasn't the most terrifying, horrible person that had ever existed. Right. He was just the enemy. He was just the guy that we had to fight. Um, yeah. So and he even appeared before... in a lot of cartoons and right. a lot of 
you know, no, there's he's all- a ridiculous figure <laughs> in those cartoons, and they're they're almost like newspaper political cartoons. Oh, a hundred percent. You could compare any depiction from like the Disney, you know, Der Fuhrer's face, or um, y- you know, any of those Doctor Seuss's. Yeah, like- the Doctor Seuss cartoons that he actually drew uh, of of Hitler being a bad guy. Right. Yeah, I mean. It's it, you can compare them to any like Donald Trump uh, uh, depiction today, right? Paper. It's just he's a ridiculous buffoon. He's you know controlling. He's like a king, you know, with a crown and a cape. Yeah, you know? he's a windbag. He's right. the, the failed artist. What is he even doing in politics? You know, right. like all this sort of like this guy. Can you believe it? Right, and of course uh, and then, there were also the 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 parody songs. There was, yes. uh, you know, Hitler has only got one ball that uh, our 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 grandmother taught to us when we were young, um, <laughs> and uh, classic classic Jewish uh, passage <laughs> culture. <laughs> Gotta learn that Hitler only has one ball song. And uh, you know, there was another song that directly compared him to Charlie Chap- Chaplin, uh, saying, "You know, he looks like Charlie Chaplin. He's got the same silly mustache." Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, that it's eventually Sarah leads. Palin and and Tina Fey. You know, it's like, oh, Sarah Palin with her Tina Fey glasses, it's like, oh, Hitler and his Charlie <laughs> Chaplin mustache. You know, like right. And so, bad. just like you know, people saying that Tina Fey looks like Sarah Palin led her to actually portray that person Mm -hmm. uh charlie chaplin comes in and says well why don't i make a movie about this hitler buffoon yeah and we get (laughs) the great dictator which great movie (laughs) yeah i i thought it was it was pretty okay i mean there's still some things that feel very odd about it now because it is you know Mm pre-war um the you know the, the jokes about, like, Hitler not really wanting to exterminate the Jews, or maybe it's Goebbels' idea. Or right. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's something that he wants to do, but that they're kind of trying to ratchet up to get political points out of it. Yeah. So there's a lot of, you know, talk about, um, th- th- there's a lot of jokes about how Germany's not doing too good. It's, there's... Uh. there's poverty everywhere there's economic collapse right and right which the, you know the persecution of the jews is just a way to distract from from the hunger that everyone's experiencing which right is also a theme in der Fuhrer's face mm-hmm. uh, the the donald duck cartoon yeah um i mean they weren't wrong because <laughs> it was a lot of that but i uh, i think uh you know Germany it really understates the, to the it. ideological hatred of, yeah. you know, all minority peoples and especially of anti-Semitism that's right. fundamental to their ideology. Right. And I think part of the reason that it underestimates that is because, you know, a lot of the Nazi ideology was based off of U.S. eugenicists and, you know, papers on black people should be slaves because eugenics here in the U.S., uh, you know, like it, it all ties together in a big shit sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, it's, it's but, all related. But David, for sure. this is the big question. How funny is the Charlie Chaplin Hitler? I, I don't think it's that funny. I mean, he speaks gibberish. He, you know, he, he gives a big speech and he talks gibberish. He's obsessed with, you know, his, is appearing powerful when he's really not. So mm-hmm. he and uh, and Mussolini get into, you know, he's not he's not named Mussolini and he's not named Hitler. He's Adenoid Hinkle. Mm-hmm. And he's not in Germany, he's in Tomania. <laughs> and I don't know, he's not the Fuhrer, he's the Fui, you know, like right. it's, there's a lot of just sort of, you know, silly Everything's, jokes. Right, slightly askew, silly. yeah. Um, yeah, but I, I don't I don't find the Hitler portrayal to be particularly funny or particularly biting satire today. No, but at the like, time, I think it, it probably you know fit what people were were, were asking for, with. from Charlie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it like had some slapstick, not like an incredible amount, but you know, it existed. <laughs> right. That's. I mean, that's, I think. Well, yeah. I think it, it probably, you know, mirrors a lot of, you know, the way that people see, like, Alec Baldwin's portrayal of Trump, you know? Yeah. 
today it's very popular with a particular demographic of people who don't see, you know, who see Trump as the source of all of the problems in the world, but who also don't see him as a major threat to their interests. Right. So it's that sort of balance where, you know, Trump is on their mind constantly. They're constantly thinking about him but they're not worried about what happens after he's gone from the office. Right. They, they're like, we'll be fine. (laughs) Like once Trump is gone, um, America will be restored. There was nothing broken about it before him that, you know, allowed this man to rise to power in the first place. Uh, Much less have people who, you know, wanted to support him enough. Uh, (laughs) The, I guess know, the difference between yeah issues. the difference between SNL doing Trump and Charlie Chaplin doing Hitler is, of course, that it's a foreign country, and so there's like, you know, uh, there's international relations implications of the things that he does, which is probably why he changes the names and everything. Sure, but you know, like, I mean, just think about all the times that we, as a country, have parodied like Kim Jong Un or Kim Kim Jong Il. Like, you it's know, true. it's there's a lot. <laughs> people people like making fun of dictators i think you know that is that that is a person that uh hollywood at least finds fascinating and easy to mock uh, because there is a certain arrogance in sort of declaring yourself a, a dictator or a modern day like king of some kind you know uh and, and i think audiences like to see someone who has declared themselves king uh, or emperor dictator hoist by their own petard and i think there's right. you know definitely an element of that to it along with you know hitler being <laughs> extra fun because he's a true piece of shit right um i i i see a lot of jokes in in, in this one that are just sort of uh about how you know Hitler hates democracy, Hitler hates the American way of life kind of thing. There's a mm-hmm. there's an American pride uh, to to the bashing of Hitler. It's it's in not the just, great dictator. Yeah, in yeah. the great dictator. Yeah. Like the dictate the, the fact that he's a dictator is like the biggest issue um, rather than you know the movement behind him. Uh, it, it's about him opposing uh, liberty and freedom, these, these right. kind of abstract concepts that, uh, that America was rallying behind at the time. Yeah. And that, you know, still sort of rallies behind today, but because they're abstract concepts, you know, you can make the, them as concrete as you want in as many different ways as you want. Uh, what is freedom? What is patriotism etc right. etc there were um there was a lot of criticism of the film at the time by right-wing isolationist uh and then charlie chaplin was even subpoenaed by a senate subcommittee oh my to God. testify about violating neutrality um but then you know it, it was kind of pushed aside after pearl harbor and, and no one really cared that charlie <laughs> chaplin was was uh was mean to the nazis at that point yeah yeah we we were all in on fuck the nazis all right um, but I, th- I think it does you know speak to yeah if we're even back then you know sure today we we talk about kim jong kim jong-un but there are implications for our foreign policy that that has at the time it was the same you know you couldn't just make a film making fun of a foreign leader even one as as terrible and, and cruel as, as Adolf Hitler. Right. Um, but he did it anyway, and hats off to, to Charlie Chaplin, even though it was not, I'm sorry, you do not win the award for Funniest Hitler. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what, do you want to talk what, about his, his speech at the end, to, where he, he's import personating Hitler? Sure. I mean, it's definitely been talked about, but uh, what, what's your, what's your, do you have a hot take or a... No, or I, I don't. I, I just, take? I just wanted to, you know, it's, it's one of the most famous speeches, you know, right. in favor of the human spirit and whatnot. And mm-hmm. the, the phrase machine minds and machine hearts has become kind of iconic uh, yeah. from that speech. Yeah. But I was just curious if you found it moving or if you 
find it, you know, kind of uh, over the top or just sort of schmaltzy? <laughs> I mean, can it be all three at once? <laughs> like, sure. it's like, it's definitely over the top and a little schmaltzy. But, you know, when, when you, you do get sort of sucked into it, you know, and I, I think that's true of a lot of classic movie moments where when you, if you look back at them with a sort of unemotional critical eye, it's very easy to, to sort of roll your eyes and go, oh, okay, I see how this is working, what buttons this is pushing. But if, you know, you're sort of just along for the ride of it, you you are i think you're able to get lost in it a little bit and you're able to uh to enjoy it sure um so uh around a a similar time to this film coming out there was another film to be or not to be which was uh directed by uh ernst lubitsch who was a jewish director who fled from the nazis and uh so you know he wanted to write a story in which you know, the, the theater actors in, uh, in, in Warsaw would, would sort of dupe Hitler and the Nazis and they would be the butt of the joke in that sense. But there isn't a lot of, you know, making fun of Hitler himself, just the, the hierarchical nature of the Nazis. So there'll be a lot of jokes where somebody tries to push the blame onto a subordinate, even when though they gave the order and the subordinate was only following orders. So the, the hierarchy of fascism is kind of being parodied there. Um, and I, I thought that it was a, it was a, it was a decent for the time uh, satire of Nazism as a larger structure, um, as opposed to just making fun of Hitler. But they still got to make fun of Hitler by having one of the actors play Hitler um, <laughs> and, and be mistaken for Hitler, which yeah. I think was what uh, Mel Brooks liked the most about it to the point where he, he remade the film in 1980, almost beat for beat, but with more of an emphasis on Mel Brooks dressed up as Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, should we talk about Mel Brooks? Just all of it? Like, <laughs> yeah, let's, uh, let's jump into so the much. Mel Brooks of it. He loves Hitler jokes. He does. Um, and, you know, many people have asked him, like, why? Why do you love Hitler's <laughs> jokes so much? Right. In and, fact, uh, Jiminy Glick, uh, the Martin Short character, phrased yeah. it best when he said, uh, <laughs> what exactly is your beef with the Nazis? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, like, you, you can't phrase it any better than that. But, I, you know... I believe his reply is always something along the lines of, you know, like it's it's a Jewish man's ultimate uh, revenge to to make Hitler the fool, to make Hitler the butt of the joke. Um, and right. you know, I'm I'm very on board with that particular ethos. But but then I think it's it's good to step beyond that and to say, okay, yes, he's making a moral stance that joking about Hitler is good and not in bad taste, even though mm -hmm. a lot of, you know, Jews see it as a bad taste joke to, you know, to treat Hitler flippantly. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's important to look past that and to see what is the actual joke when he's depicting Hitler himself. Uh, so I think let's start with the, with the producers then, because I think that was his, you know, that was his yeah. directorial debut uh, in film. Let's do it. <laughs> I, I um, mean, so, so you all know the premise of the producers, yes? Or should we should we explain it real fast? Let's enumerate it anyway. All right, let's do it real fast. Uh, so basically, there's a Broadway producer who his accountant or his guy who is an accountant basically deduces that you can make more money from a Broadway play that's a flop on the first night and closes immediately than from one that uh lasts like you know even a year and so they try to to come up with the worst broadway musical ever to produce and they they find it and it's called springtime for hitler uh and they produce it and then it accidentally is successful <laughs> um and hijinks ensue but but what we're here to talk about is that very play that they produce springtime for hitler <laughs> right um so this is 
probably it, it's it's one of my favorite films of all time. It, if people ask me what my favorite comedy is, I usually say the producers because you're talking I the really, original, right? The original producers, yeah. I, I I just find the premise so fantastic. I think it's the performances. Zero Mostel and Gene Wilder are mm-hmm. the best of their careers and the best <laughs> performances in a comedy. I mean, you just you can't beat it. Um, you know. The, Bialystok is so slimy and dis- disreputable, and yet you you find him kind of lovable in his right. own way. And uh, and Gene Wilder is so neurotic and over the top, but he pulls it off. Is you know in the same way it's that he would Gene pull Wilder. off Gene Wilder. He Wonka. pulls off everything, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. But I mean, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> to immediately compare it to the the Broadway musical Nathan Lane. I love him. He's great. But is he slimy enough? Is he grody enough to be a, a Bialystok? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like he can, he, Nathan Lane can pull it off. Maybe not to the, the level of the original, but I, I, then, I, uh, I, I can't get mad at Nathan Lane. And then Matthew Broderick, he can do over the top, but can he ground over the top uh, performance the way that Gene Wilder can? I don't, I don't think so. It, it just kind of comes across as like mimicking Gene Wilder, which is a shame. Mm, mm. But um, uh, the original, absolutely one of my favorites. And once it gets to the actual performance of Springtime for Hitler, by this point, we've built up, you know, <laughs> we've built up so much about the show. We've seen the writer who is completely <laughs> deranged. Um, right. He's he's basically a, a former Nazi who is in hiding in america right. he's like a former and current like he doesn't hide right. it very much at all he no. sort of when he hears that people have come to read his script uh you know he surrenders and agrees to go to prison but then immediately afterward like hands them out uh you know nazi armbands that he's just right keeping around so yep he's not really hiding it no, no. Uh, you know, and he trains a bunch of pigeons. That's that's his other thing. Um, but so, you know, he 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 has written Springtime for Hitler as this very serious, basically propaganda piece for Hitler. Um, and don't don't they have him playing Hitler, or am I misremembering that? You're misremembering. That's from the uh, the remake. The, oh, that's the, from the, the remake musical version. Okay. So the they uh, they hold auditions to get their their Hitler, and they reject all the people who are actually trying out for Hitler, and they pick instead this guy named LSD. Uh, I believe it's like Leonardo Saint Dupois or something, mm-hmm. um, and he's uh, <laughs> and he's just this hippie dude who's you know completely stupid, doesn't understand anything about what's going on. He's in the wrong theater, and right. so they pick him. And to direct, they get this extremely camp, uh, you know, they, they get a, a, a gay theater director, which yeah. at the time, you know, there were some sort of uncomfortable jokes about homosexuality that, you know, the uncomfortability of, uh, of the, our two leads was not the punchline. Right. It was, the punchline was how weird uh, non-straights are, was, which is a yeah. little, yeah. Not um, everything ages the best. <laughs> Not everything ages the best in this one, um, but uh, they they hire this director who you know makes it into a campy Broadway style you know romp, <laughs> and so all of these elements together end up creating a kind of a kind of satire you know yeah that it's that it's a deadly serious story it's played you know straight but it's directed gay yeah. Yeah. Um, and the actor is not a ruthless dictator. He's a hippie. <laughs> right. Or in the remake, he ends up being get played by the director. And so is right. played in this very foppish, uh, queer affected performance of Hitler. Right. And I actually, I really don't think that that's as, you know, interesting a joke. I don't think it's as complex. Mm. I mean, let's play Hitler gay. I, you know, it, first of all, it, it situates gayness as something to be ridiculed. Sure, you know, yeah. You couldn't have, 
why can't there be a gay dictator? <laughs> that's not what I'm <laughs> Hashtag saying. Hashtag girl boss. Right, that's Get not it, what I'm yes, saying. But, queen. <laughs> but of course, if there were a dictator who happened to be a homosexual, the thing to criticize about them wouldn't be that they were too camp or too, or too gay. Yeah, no, it would be all of the human rights atrocities that they're right. most likely committing. So that's what the joke is, that he's, you know, a, a drug addict and and that he's, uh, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't understand the gravity of the, of the, go- of the goings on. Mm-hmm. You know, when LSD is playing Hitler, he's like, hey man, you're German. We're all Germans. Man, that's crazy, man. They're far out. <laughs> Um, so I think that's like a much better sort of contrast. And also just the, the gay Hitler thing, it's, it's played out. We see it all the time. I mean, it's more played out now. Yes, for sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, there's like a famous series of sketches um, from uh, 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 Harry Enfield, uh, the, that sketch show. Uh, it's a British sketch show. And they just play, you know, gay Nazis. Mm-hmm. That's the joke. That's the whole thing. Woo. <laughs> so I think that shows an interesting kind of progression in terms of, you know, what Mel Brooks thought would work on stage versus what he thought, you know, worked when he first wrote the, the, the screenplay. Going from, you know, Hitler, the hippie, to Hitler, the gay man. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, I, and I think it's something that we've seen less and less of now as you know queerness as a concept is less uh appropriate well i mean it's always been inappropriate but it's less culturally accepted as a a easy form of ridicule um it's not funny in and of itself to play something as effeminate right to play a, a, a you know a straight male character as effeminate yeah yeah do we want to dig into some more modern stuff past past the Mel Brooks of it all? Um, yeah. So uh, at, at a certain point, you know, we start to normalize uh, Hitler as a joke. It's not as controversial as it was with the producers. You know, when that came out, they tried to get him to switch it to, you know, uh, to Mussolini. To Mussolini. Springtime for Mussolini, but, but it doesn't work the not, same way. It not only does it not work the same way, it's just, it's not, uh, it, it's not a, it's not a joke. Like no one needs to make fun of Mussolini today. Like, right. The spirit of Mussolini did not survive his, his death. There's no yeah. Mussolini worshipers. There's no, you I know, mean, there probably are, but they're not like numerous enough to give a shit about. <laughs> right. I, there's just very few, you know, stories about the neo-Nazis trying to resurrect Mussolini. That's true. That's true. There are there are a lot about people trying to resurrect Hitler. Right. Um, so of course there there were a lot of other examples of of little tiny bits of of Hitler appearing, but there were a few uh, modern examples of films that I thought were worth bringing up, uh, especially those outside of the U.S. Um, mm-hmm. that, that don't get talked about a lot. There was one called. Uh, Look Who's Back. It's a German film, uh, which was sort of like a Borat but with Hitler, oh which, you know, God. Borat was also anti-Semitic, so it, it kind of works. Um, and then, of course, you know, <laughs> uh, Sasha Baron Cohen did uh, the, the the Dictator, which is sort of a, a reflection of the great dictator, even though mm-hmm. it's it's talking about a dictator in, uh, uh, in the Middle East rather than in, in Nazi Germany. Mm-hmm. But anyway, look who's back is Hitler survives. He's back from the dead and he's just going around talking to people, real people in, in real life. And just no one seems to care that he's Hitler. And he goes on a debate show and he, you know, wins the debate. He goes to, to see all these, uh, to, he goes through all these political movements to try and get back into mm-hmm. power. And he nearly does. So it's, it's again, a story about, Hitler's legacy going beyond his, beyond his, his death. Yeah. Um, yeah. There was also a, a 2008 Russian comedy called uh, Hitler Goes Kaput, which is more of like a, I don't know, an anachronistic 
uh, depiction of uh, a, a Soviet spy taking out Hitler, um, mm. and Hitler is portrayed as very ridiculous. Uh, he looks nothing like Hitler, but that's like part of the joke. He's right. he's just sort of obsessive and neurotic and and all those kind of things. And then the badass super spy is like a comedy, you know, almost like a James Bond type but like more, austin powers kind of very austin thing. powers yeah or get I, smart yeah because i guess you know soviet russia they have a different relationship to hitler still one that is you antagonistic know, still one that's antagonistic and that depicts him as a monster and that you know they would want to rob him of power through comedy but it's very different from the american jew relationship yeah. to, to hitler absolutely <laughs> would agree with that 100 um, there's of course a lot of uh people switching places with nazis to comedic effect uh you know in addition to the great dictator uh there was a, a film called goebbels und geduldig which is okay. joseph goebbels uh switching places with a a jewish prisoner in a concentration camp and then hilarity ensues Jeez, <laughs> that one's dark. Yeah, I, it's, it seems to be that way. There was a, a, a German, another German film called Mein Fuhrer, The Really Truest Truth About Adolf Hitler, which came out in 2007. <laughs> this one is very strange uh, because it's sort of like the King's Speech, but with Hitler. Yeah, that's, it's, it's a strange premise, it seems like. Right. And it's Hitler at the end of the war, you know, so again, similar to King's Speech, which came out like three years later. (laughs) This actually predates it somehow. But anyway, so they get a Jewish vocal coach to come in and help Hitler regain his power because he's a bedwetter. He's addicted to drugs. He's, uh, you know, he's emotionally stunted and he's physically debilitated and, and he's losing his voice and all of these things are happening to him. So it almost kind of humanizes Hitler, which is which is exactly what it was criticized for when it came out. Um, yeah. But uh, the ending is supposed to be that he loses his voice, and the uh, the the Jew who's been helping him, you know, regain his voice, has to dub him over, and again gets to speak for Hitler oh, to God. the crowd, and and says, you know. Why do you follow me? I'm an idiot. I wet the bed. My my father beat me and I try to take it out on the Jews. All these things. And then he gets shot in the head and then and then dies. Oh god. Uh so it's you know, it, it was part of this sort of uh movement I guess to try and reclaim some kind of power in the retelling of of the the end of the Nazis. Um but but it's it's really uncomfortable. It was I mean it was directed by a Jew, so it, yeah. but it it just doesn't really work, uh, and, and it does serve to more or less humanize Hitler and suggest that like Goebbels was the only one who actually hated the Jews. Oof, that's a that's a tough one. Yeah. Um. Yeah, like it's hard. It's it's not easy to. I mean, I think it's entirely impossible to make a film about Hitler and not have someone take offense or criticize it or, you know, point out that it could be read in a way that you as its creator did not intend. Um, Because it's a tricky and very understandably an emotionally, like, tense subject um you know like there's there's not a a jew alive who doesn't know someone uh either personally or you know someone in their family who was not affected by the holocaust uh in some way right um so you know at the same time the internet when that when it's when it's decoupled from jewishness the internet is able to to treat it very flippantly and just kind of say well it's it's just hitler we can make jokes about it and that's i think where like the downfall meme comes from Mm -hmm. you know all of the hitler rants videos where they dub him over right you know it's just ridiculous to have hitler be talking about something that isn't historically accurate but they don't really you know treat it like the gravity of making fun of hitler it's just like no it would it's funny look it's hitler saying he doesn't like (laughs) the new spongebob he likes old spongebob right but but i mean i think those those things 
you know, I, I still support that. Um, I, I think it's, it does contribute to robbing Hitler of some of his mystique to basically just be like, you know, in, in, in those memes, he's basically old man yells at cloud, you know, like, I I guess on some level that, that does work as a joke, but I don't know if, if making him hack to bring up is the same as robbing him of his power. So, I mean, if we go back to like Godwin's law, you know, Mm -hmm. the idea is that by bringing him up so much, the compa- the abil- we've lost the ability to actually compare someone to Hitler because mm. every time you do, it just sounds like you're returning to a hack premise for a critique. And I think the right. same goes for comedy, that okay. now Hitler has become so hack that referring to him and trying to satirize him no longer holds the power that it did in 1960 or, you know, even in 19... 19- you know, nineteen thirty in the late nineteen thirties before we mm-hmm. went to war. You know, it now sure. just lacks any critical power whatsoever, and it's just a hack comedian returning to a hack premise. Well, so I think on that note, let's talk about Jojo Rabbit. Let's <laughs> yeah, talk right. about the most recent uh, Hitler parody that we've we've gotten. Right, and um, sort of the reason that we wanted to address it now. Yeah, yeah, was uh, Taika Waititi's Jojo Rabbit from last year. Uh, I, I really like this film, but I also have a lot of very complicated feelings about it. Um, yeah. and I think it, it ties into, to what we were just talking about, how, you know, what, what is the purpose of Hitler in film in, right. you know, 2019, 2020? What, I mean, what I appreciate is that this, this is feeling? in some ways kind of an original joke. I've never seen an imaginary Hitler before. Mm-hmm. And I've never seen the idea that it's Hitler through the eyes of a young child in Germany. Yes. Um, but I was expecting, I think I was expecting more jokes like the joke with the poster in the beginning where they, they put up a poster and it's Hitler's actual face. And then they kind of wipe up and down it and it turns into Taika Waititi's, Taika Waititi Hitler face. I was expecting more jokes like that, like maybe he's learning about Hitler in school and and his rise to power, but, uh, you know, Hitler's right there next to him, you know, talking about, you know, how glorious he is, and the disconnect between the childish view of Hitler versus what he actually did and how he actually came to power would be, you know, the, 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 the joke. Focus. Right, but it was more so just seeing Hitler depicted as a totally innocent, you know, little uh little child version of, of him, right basically i, I, I do yeah though i do say i like taiko watiti's uh when asked what he did to prepare for the role he said i don't know he's a cunt <laughs> <laughs> like i did nothing <laughs> like i'm not yeah, looking he for accuracy here hitler's like speeches right. and watch him and try to mimic him no, right that would be giving him too much credit yeah right he's like he's like i'm here to make fun of this asshole like there's there's no right. point in doing any research That's although i'd imagine is. that he probably did watch uh the great the great dictator um there's oh a i'm lot sure of and i'm sure he's watched Chaplin. the producers there's definitely a lot of Chaplin. you know taiko watiti's comedic style i think in general is it's like this very interesting blend of you know old timey slapstick plus like monty python-esque like satire with just plus, like a uh, dash of uh, like flight of the concords <laughs> you know like right. it's well, all sort yeah, of he directed up. many flight of the concords episodes yeah yeah uh, so you can't cite him as his own influence well, i mean it's not his own influence but like you can <laughs> you can taste the flavor you know right I, I think i think i would describe what you're trying to gesture at with flight of the concords is it's the sort of um, you know, the, the, the monotone, the, uh, uh, deadpan, you know, yeah, a little esque deadpan, deadpan, understated, like yeah. off kilter comedy. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's definitely a good description. Uh, but the, the joke of his Hitler character is that he's, you know, very innocent and doesn't recognize, you know, the monstrous things that he's saying as monstrous because he's just a child which is sort of the joke of all of the, you know, 
there's a lot of sketches that are like Lil Hitler or Kid Hitler or <laughs> right. Baby Hitler, with the joke being, if we take this monstrous figure and put him into an innocent body, into mm-hmm. like a, a teenage girl context, then he becomes, you know, emasculated and mm-hmm. and de-threatened, unthreatening, yeah. non-threatening. Yeah. Um, it's it, you're I think you're absolutely right with that. Like a lot of the jokes at Hitler's expense are very much about emasculation. Um either through, you know, the gay Hitlers um, and, you know, the decoupling of masculinity with with gayness and that perceived disconnect um, with, you know, having childish Hitler. If you're a child, you're not a man. Um, Having feminine Hitler, like very obviously (laughs) not masculine. There's a girl Hitler in the Venture Brothers. Yeah, right. Or like sexy Hitler, you know, I've... (laughs) You, you've seen that before you've yeah. been on the internet um <laughs> all the internet but, but yeah hitler. i rapping hitler what which, that's a weird one too because it's, yeah. it's specifically that he's doing a type of music that we assume that he would dislike right because it's you know it's ethnic quote unquote music. yeah he, he but I don't know. Did he? I don't know if he liked jazz. I know he liked Wagner. I don't know no. if he, you know, specifically hated jazz and thought it was. I mean, I'm no sure jazz. he hated jazz. Like he he hated black people. <laughs> like <laughs> he did that. You know, that, that is true. Um, but yeah, the he rapping did, Hitler. The, I think that one of the worst YouTube channels ever created or maintained was Epic, Epic rap, rap, rap Battles of History. <laughs> <laughs> and they should be absolutely deleted, not just their Hitler content, but all of their content. It's terrible. Yeah, it's not great. It's like, talk of it's just unfunny in so many ways, you know? It's just right. such basic hack it's humor. It's lazy. It's yeah. very it's lazy. Just literally rhyming things. I, I watched all three of the, it was, they did Hitler versus, I would expect like Hitler versus Stalin or Hitler versus Churchill. Mm-hmm. They did Hitler versus Darth Vader. Like So, like, this is also the other thing that I think comes along with parodying Hitler, is mm-hmm. that, you know, he becomes... Another pop culture figure. Right, exactly. Like, he's less grounded in the Reality. historical realness. Um, yeah, and it becomes, you know it's Hitler, the singing and dancing Nazi. And what are Nazis? They're just some bad guys in video games. Right. They didn't They're have the an ideology. Exactly. As, as they don't, Hydra in uh, Right. Captain in America. Marvel. Yeah. Like they, they don't have a distinct ideology other than evil. You right. know, and they don't like, have a connection to the real world any more than, than a stormtrooper does. And they don't have any ability to offend any more than a stormtrooper would. So it's, right. it's, it's it's this yeah it's another it's several layers of just s- distancing psychologically from the historical event, which yeah. I don't think maintains the same satirical weight as a Mel Brooks, uh, or or an Ernst Lubitsch or you know. Anything. Yeah, uh, um, but but to go back to Jojo Rabbit, let, I mean. So, so what are your your feelings specifically about this movie? Do you feel that it um, succeeds as a Hitler parody, or do you feel like there's not enough for your taste, or that parts of it undercut the satire? Like, like what, well, I what's think your that the, the Hitler stuff is actually really secondary. That it really yeah. is more so a story about a a child trying to play act as as a Nazi, right? Know? And, and failing at that, and then learning empathy um, mm-hmm. for another human being, because his mother uh, invited a, a Jew to hide in their walls and in their mm-hmm. attic um, without consulting her Nazi son about it. Oh, I mean, um, yeah, because <laughs> he's a Nazi. Wouldn't. Right, and I don't think I've seen parodies of the Hitler Youth camp, which I think yeah. is, is certainly... Uh, you know, relevant to our situation today because we're no longer just dealing with the the the, the aged political Nazis, the right. uh, the the Nazis in power. We're dealing with you know internet Nazis, Nazi thirteen year olds, right? 
where and, the uh, internet is basically their Nazi camp, <laughs> you know, right. where they go to and, hang out with all their Nazi friends. And literal youth militias, yeah. uh, like we saw with- um, In Kenosha. Yeah, in Kenosha, that, that these, you know, these children are being trained with guns in the same way that these Hitler youth camps functioned. Uh, yeah. With and, hate and, in their hearts, with, with true yeah. hate for, um, you know, anybody stepping out of line and with the belief that they are responsible for protecting their culture or their property rights or whatever. Right, quote unquote. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's, it's troubling to say the least. And so I, I definitely commend Jojo Rabbit for its focus on um, German youth and the sort of youth culture and youth brainwashing um, that was just sort of part of the society. And like, you know, it was hard to recognize it as brainwashing when like all your friends do it too. Like that's just normal, right? You know, like you have no other um, reference point in the world and it's hard to break out of that when that's all that you've been raised with. And, and you know, I definitely think the movie um, does, does a decent job about talking about that sort of de-radicalization right. process. The question always being, though, in so doing, are we, are we at the same time sort of empathizing with the Nazis and, and giving them a better shot than they actually deserved? Um, mm -hmm. You know, would a character like Jojo actually have switched sides? Were there, you know, this many uh, resistors kind of quietly resisting the Nazis within the, the power structures as the, uh, um, uh, you know, as the, the, the leader of the, uh, the Hitler youth camps, you know, ends up being like a good gay Nazi. Right. I mean, yeah, like it's, it's definitely uncomfortable for me. I think the most uncomfortable part about it is, you know, he, he's trying to interview the girl in Jojo, uh, the main character trying to interview the girl on the wall. Um, and you know, she's making up all of these crazy stories about what Jews are like to, you know, feed into his fascistic German narrative of what, Right. And Jew to point out is. how how childish it is to you know try yeah. and depict these people as pure evil, and I think it it, it kind of creates a uh, you know a view of the the Jew that can be so easily shattered. You know, like why does the German hate the Jew? Oh, well, it's because he assumes that the Jew is a demon, and mm -hmm. so if you eliminate that misconception by showing them a real Jewish person, then that will free them of their of their you know delusion and, and they will stop being anti-semitic but it's not exactly the case you know they right, would be, and, okay and well you're one of the good ones but all those other this jews system this cabal of jews and even if we decide that you know the jews as a whole are not a conspiracy we still want to eliminate them because they're just not good enough to deserve to continue existing in our perfect right. world they're not german so why are they in Germany? Right. So, so it, it kind of oversimplifies German, and makes then. it too easy to break out of the the trap that is anti-Semitism. Uh, and it clearly is a trap that's still very yeah. effective. That once you're radicalized about one thing, even if that thing is, uh, you know, leftism, socialism, there are ways that you can be mm -hmm. taken from a very positive, uh, you know, anti-capitalist position to an anti-Jewish position. Not that I'm characterizing all anti-capitalism as anti-Semitic. No, I think opposite. you very much are not. Um, <laughs> no, but I, but it, you know, it's it continues to be one of those strange phenomena that anti-Semitism is alive and well on both the left and the right, and right. Uh, not equally. <laughs> not equally. I would I would argue much worse on the right. Um, yes. but the left is got some issues too. And, you know, they, they should also be addressed. Um, right. But yeah. I think and, it was so, just recently that, uh, the, the leader of the, um, the NAACP chapter in Philadelphia near where I live, 
uh, their their president uh, had to, or maybe it wasn't their president, but someone had to step down uh, because of anti-Semitic comments. Mm-hmm. Um, I can provide a source for that instead yeah. of just saying things. <laughs> I mean, you know, this this year there has been a lot of a lot of shit about a lot of things, and anti-Semitism is one of them. Um, and it's it's a shame that this is still a freaking issue. Um, but I, I think you know to sort of bring it back <laughs> a little bit. Um, do, do you think that, you know, movies like Jojo Rabbit are ultimately hurting or helping, um, you know, hurt, hurting or helping? Yeah, just in, in general, help, helping the cause of... I don't think it's quite so simple. Anything. I think yeah, that there are okay. positives and negatives to it. Um, mm-hmm. I've, I've seen some reviews that talk about, you know, how this is like a satire that we need for our times, that it's, it's very relevant. It's a very, um, you know, the term which uh, is, is most commonly used uh, is the, the usable past. You know, mm. it's, it's constructing not the past as it was, but the past as we can use it today to construct, you know, a, a critique of our current society. For sure, absolutely. I, I mean, you, I think you know, that's, that's true of a lot of, his, you know, like all historical quote-unquote films. Right. Um, are, you know, less about you, because you can have a film about the Civil War, and it's going to be treated differently in 18, (laughs) in 1890, versus it's going to be treated in uh, 1950, versus how it's going to be treated in 1990, versus how it's going to be treated in 2020, you know, like, It's it's going to reflect more about the time period in which it's being created than necessarily the time period that it is about, um, because it's it's the lens of that time through our current understanding. Right. Um, I think that one of the reviewer one of the reviews that I saw for Jojo Rabbit um, had the most damning critique, which was to slightly compare it to Life Is Beautiful, the Roberto Benigni film. Are you familiar with this one at all? I, it sounds so familiar. I feel like I know it, but I yeah, it's, am it's drawing a, a blank. It's an Italian man. His his wife and and his son are put in a concentration camp, and he lies to oh, his son. Oh, this one. Oh, to God. pretend that oh, we're just playing a game. Um, and it's one of my least favorite films that I've yes. ever seen. Yes, um, I know. I I've, absolutely hate it. Mel Brooks I haven't hated watched it. it, but I've watched lots of critiques of it, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure like that is going to be one of the most like universally panned by Jews uh, Holocaust well, my, films. My, my dad actually felt that there was something kind of beautiful about it. That that uh, you know, it was about the you know the the, the, the cruelty and the spirit. horror of the of the concentration camp, but it was about you know, overcoming it. And that was sort of a, a, a wish fulfillment for him. Okay, so there was a 1999 film that was similar, uh, starring Robin Williams called Jacob the Liar. Where oh. He pretends to have a access to a radio and tells everyone in the ghetto that uh, that he's getting reports that the the Germans are losing and that the, the Brits are winning. And mm. he lies so well that you know, he even tricks the Nazis into thinking he really has a radio. Oh my God! It's all to give people hope. Um, you know, it's it, it's it's really dumb. Uh, and, 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 <laughs> and there was another one uh, that was I can't remember the title, but it was you know imagining all of the Jews in uh, in a particular place pretending to get on a train going to a concentration camp, but the train actually goes to Palestine to freedom. Uh, mm. But then that one at least is different because it ends with uh, it turns out it was all a fantasy and oh. they actually did end up going to a concentration camp. So it's at least copying to the fact that this is not a realistic portrayal of you know what it's like to experience the Holocaust. <laughs> the Holocaust. Yeah. Um, no, there were not a lot of happy endings when people right. got on trains. So the semi-happy ending of JoJo, is it Benini-ish? Is it, is it Life is Beautiful? Or is it, um, you know, a, a modicum of hope for us uh, today in coping with hate? Um, 
I will leave that up to you guys to decide. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Any other tiny examples that you saw that uh, that you wanted to lay out, Hannah? I, I know we, um, we skipped a I lot mean, of the ones that we did watch, but <laughs> there's just not enough time to talk about everything. Uh, one one thing that I did just want to note is, uh, you know, Kung Fury. If if you haven't watched it, I believe it's still um, it's still on Netflix. Is it? It might not be. Uh, but it's just the most insane like B movie of Kung I think it's Fu up in full nonsense. on YouTube actually. Oh, it's on YouTube. Okay, you can watch it. Watch it there. Um, but you know, just another one of those like bonkers, zany like balls to the walls. Just using Hitler as like you know the same way you would use Darth Vader, basically. Right. Um, yeah. But it's like it is it's just kind of fun and i hate that it's fun but it is you know right um, it's, like it's uh it's kind of like the 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 tv trope uh stupid jetpack hitler you know right exactly you Where know you take something hit like hitler and you just make it trivial um, right like the, one thing that comes to mind is there's a a wild book series called uh, about a samurai cat and uh i have one called samurai cat goes to hell and he fights a lot of Nazi dinosaurs, including or, like dinosaur Hitler. Or um, Hitler in hell. And, we've we've seen know, this before, folks. Yeah, yeah. Um, what about, did you, did you watch the Supernatural episode where they bring back Hitler and then afterwards, <laughs> uh, Dean just spends like a whole episode just going, I killed Hitler, you know, uh, somebody should buy me a drink, I'm, I killed Hitler. Oh my God. Like, it's just very, you know, it's trivializing it. It's not making a big deal out of it. I mean, sure, like, the Thule Society was, like, a thing that's but, like, kind barely. of based in historical fact that there like, were these occultists in the Nazis. But, yeah, resurrecting Hitler for jokes, it happens. Yep. So <laughs> uh, uh, it is. Anything for you, also, David? Yeah, uh... Let's see. There's Rick and Morty's Aberdolf Linkler, which is just taking the two most hack political jokes and combining them together. Um, yeah. So, you know, I mean, we didn't even get into uh, Hitalia at all, which, you know, while not... Uh, uh, is Hitler in Hitalia? It's not Hitler, but it's Nazi Germany, so it, like, might right. as well be, you know? Terrible. Um, the, but... the Axis power is as comedic characters as... It's weird. Comedic, lovable, gay, shippable characters is Very just odd. the most bizarre thing to come out of Japan <laughs> that, even more bizarrely, American teenagers decided to latch on to. Um, just gonna side-eye everyone involved in that for, for a while. <laughs> um, um, there's one yeah. video game that I, I wanted to include on the list, which was, yeah. uh, it was pretty controversial, I think, when it came out. It was a, a sequel to Wolfenstein, yep. the, 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 what is it? The, uh, the New Colossus. And so that's, it's an alternate history. So Hitler is aged up uh, to, you know, 71 years old. And so he's just like a vomiting. Yeah. Old Hitler. Right. So he's just like a demented, uh, vomiting. Emasculated, elderly man. Right. Which, so you know, it's just like, kind of like. You know, it, it's it's about like the loyalty that they have to this like insane person, right? Uh, that even as he loses his mind, he's still the ruler of the world in this right in this universe. So. Which you know I think has been a point that sci-fi has been making for decades now, where you know whatever has some loyalty to. Ah, uh, yes, we are the pure race, but then, you know, the person in charge of them is, like, this ugly, disgusting uh, pile of pus, and it's like, <laughs> this, this is your purity, and, you know, right? It, yeah. it, it's, it's all maybe we'll talk about the we'll, Maybe we'll talk about the more metaphorical portrayals of Hitler, like yeah. Davros and, and uh, what Darth Vader. Darth <laughs> Vader. Well, it's, I guess it's more Palpatine than yeah. Vader's more of like an SS guy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> doesn't make it better. Doesn't make it better at all. Uh, but yeah, maybe we'll talk about that more in the future. Uh, in the meantime... Tell us, tell us what your favorite Hitler is. Mine right. is the, the dead one. 
Right. Do you know any good Hitler one line one liner jokes? Yeah. Don't My tweet guess them is at you us. Don't. Yeah, don't. Don't tweet us anything about Hitler, please. Right. Um, but tweet only... us uh, what you want us to talk about next. We've got yeah. we've got plenty of topics that we'd we'd love to cover. Um, yeah. maybe some less controversial than this, maybe some more. <laughs> yeah, we're we're ready to take it all on. Um so we'll we'll see you next week with a, another episode of Standing Stanley Tucci, uh, our brand new hit series where we rewatch the entire filmography right. of the Tucci himself. Right. It would be uh, great if next week was the one where he plays Adolf, Adolf Eichmann for that TV yeah. show. But I don't think it is. <laughs> uh, but uh, we'll we'll see you then. Bye. Bye.